let's talk a bit, if we may, about uh, you're both designers. Uh, Michael, you're a lighting designer. Your relationship to the director. How do you two work out and approach how that play is going to be interpreted? One has to approach the, the sort of the initial meeting with an open mind. I, I think the, the worst situation is to come loaded with like solutions and concepts because uh, in a situation in which uh, a, a director is, say, a little uncertain perhaps of their territory and speaking to you, um, they can sometimes sort of collapse under the weight of, of all these concepts and you end up right away subverting the director's real wishes. But I think that if you're, if you're a good, first of all, a good listener, and also I think with many cases with directors, they, they in, a, in quotes, do not know how to talk to lighting designers. I mean, in other words, it's a kind of a, it's an ephemeral art, really. I mean, it doesn't exist in anything other than the performance. So I think that the, the ideal is to come in in a situation where you can sort of say to the, the director, um, just, just talk to me in a general sense about what you're trying to do, never mind even mentioning the word lights. Because if you can get simply uh, the beginnings of a dialogue, uh, the beginnings of ideas being ex expressed, as I say, not necessarily in lighting terms, uh, I mean, a, a, a Are really, you present at early design meetings with the set designer and costume designer? Uh, am I, no, not necessarily. Would you like uh, to be? It's nice to be, yes. Occasionally you do get involved, but usually lighting comes in a little bit later. Mm. And, uh, and, and quite honestly, the, the amazing thing is that you can range all the way from a director who has absolutely mentally lit a production while conceiving of it and directing it. So Robin that, Phillips? Robin is incredible in that sense. He can see the lighting. And so that it's a case simply of, of taking and going with the information and the visual concepts that are being offered. Uh, you can also go to the other extreme, which is somebody who will say, okay, uh, you've seen my show, you've seen my, my run through, um, we've talked a little bit, off you go. Uh, and in a couple of days, I'll come in and see what you've done. Which do so, you prefer? Well, I, I, I think the ideal is perhaps somewhere in the middle from the point of view of the ability to engage in a dialogue. Now, I think the point is that with a very experienced director who is absolutely conversant with lighting, this actually does result in a dialogue. I mean, even a situation where the director has seen everything, um, you end up doing a sort of a little kind of a to and fro because you, you offer something and if it's not quite right, you, you say, yes, by all means, tell me what, what doesn't feel right, and you adjust. So what's, you're not in a kind of a, a hard set process. What's the worst thing, what's the thing you hate to hear from a director when he looks at a, a cue? Um, it, it, it's, the, it's the, I don't like this. Because <laughs> it, you go, well, what is it that you don't like? Is it too bright, too dim? And of course, you see, the, the other thing that actually has helped us recently is the the use of the computer control systems means that one can as they say record the information record a cue at almost any time instantly because it used to be that you would sit there for you know half an hour sometimes building the look of a cue and then it would take another 20 minutes for the operators to record this information and one of my big arguments is that there's nothing um, absolute in lighting. Everything is relative. So if something is bright, it's bright in relation to something else. If it's brightly colored, it's in relation to something else. Uh, you know, a red is not a red. It's, it's a color in relation to something else. And the beauty of the new systems is that you can, you can record information very quickly and you can build qu like what I call sketch in the same way as an artist when they're roughing in a painting gets a general shape. I work on the principle that it's much better to get a general shape and then go back and start working detail because for one thing you're you're I mean we're always telling a story. That's really what we're all about. We're we're trying to take people and add to the value of the story that the play is essentially trying to convey. And so my job is to reinforce the story in every every in any way I can. And who's but, your favorite director? Uh, 
that, that's that's a really tough one because it, I always say that it's the director I'm working with at the time. Give me uh, your three. Give me your three <laughs> favorite directors, or who you, you you've had experiences that have most been most fulfilling for you. Um, boy, that, that, that I mean, it is, I mean, Robin definitely because, as I say, uh, uh, somebody who absolutely sees things and understands where we're all going. Um, I think Latvi Mansuri because he's a very what I would call generous director in the sense that uh, he's an opera director. Op right? Opera director, yes, because you, you off you go, uh, and you you sort of develop a kind of a shorthand of of you know taking risks and trying things and so on, and then uh, it's hard to say. I I mean I've done an awful lot of work with Stephen Shipper at Winnipeg, and he's somebody who uh, really appreciates one's contribution. I mean, there's some directors that, that don't seem to kind of put two and two together, but he's somebody who really appreciates it. You, I right. think those three people probably uh, have, have what would you call it, sort of influenced my approaches, mainly because I think I've probably done more productions with e right. each of those individuals.